I used to sculpt animals in polymer clay as a child all the time, and it's been many years since. Recently, I've been on a quest to find an alternative to epoxy putty for sculpting animals, so please join me in my return to polymer clay as an adult while I create a semi-realistic rainforest frog in Sculpey. I find sculpture kind of magical. And it can start with wire, aluminum foil, and a hunk of clay, all guided with some references. I printed a circle at 2 inches to make sure my frog stays the right size for a rainforest frog. The tools I'll use the most are pliers, wax carving tools, and calipers. The pliers also have built-in wire cutters. And the calipers have a good point at the end for accurate measurements. By the way, all the tools and supplies are listed below. The wire I'm cutting will become the legs and back of the frog. I join them with thin jewelry wire. Separating the wires becomes the start of the legs. It doesn't look like anything right now, but just wait. And here's where the calipers come in handy. They help me make sure I keep the arms proportionate to each other. And now I have the start of the armature. Time to bulk up the form with foil. But this doesn't need to be perfect at all. I just need enough of the general fog shape to help give a strong base for sculpting and to reduce the total thickness of the clay. I do check to make sure it's the right size though. Starting to look a tiny bit like a frog. Wrapping thin jewelry wire will help give some texture for the clay to grip onto the legs later. And now I have an armature in the right pose all ready for clay. The polymer clay I'm using is original Sculpey in terracotta color. I condition the clay by pressing with my fingers and then start adding the bulk of the frog, pressing firmly into the foil. As I join the different pieces, I try to make sure that I press firmly and not trap any air between the different parts of the clay. If there are pockets of air, they could bubble during baking, so I try to squish them out. I also block in the general shape of the head. Using those anatomical charts from earlier, as well as photos of real breviceps rain frogs, I begin blocking in the major muscle groups. And noodles of clay to slowly refine the shape of the frog. 
this frog is one of two polymer clay projects, I started as an experiment to see what I could do with this media as an adult. Most of my sculpting experience has been horses and epoxy putty, which is a very different material with its own set of rules. So you may see me try more experimental approaches that may differ from standard polymer clay practice. And that was kind of the whole point of this project. Part of my journey is to learn what techniques I developed from working with epoxy putty translate well into polymer and which don't. The most important thing I've learned so far is to just be aware of what techniques might be trapping air or could lend the different layers to delaminate in the oven. I think that's been the biggest difference between the two materials for me so far. In some ways, I think epoxy putty is forgiving and that I don't have to worry as much about the construction of it. Yet, on the other hand, I find polymer clay much more forgiving because I can take my time to work out the forms. I'm not racing against the clock before my clay cures <laughs> because it won't. And so I keep adding material and carving away as needed and he slowly starts to come to life. Oh, maybe a little too much life. And he's off. Don't worry, I caught him. One of my favorite tips for eyes is to use steel ball bearings and I'm happy to report this works well for both epoxy buddy and polymer clays. Oh no you don't. Introducing my little buck-eyed monster. Oh wait, this is supposed to be a frog. Let's fix this. I continue to use noodle shapes to block in the forms of the frog. It's rough, but this blocking method makes it so much easier to get something started. This came from the most helpful art advice I ever received, which was to look at my subject matter and ask, what shapes is it made of? What kind of shapes make up this arm? This lick? Then sculpt those shapes. It's far from perfect, and the beauty is it doesn't have to be perfect. That's why I like to call it the rough block-in stage. And once it's blocked in, then I can start to refine it. Then I can start to make it perfect. If I want to. Maybe next time I'll make something more stylized. And you know what? <laughs> I'll block that in too. That method of thinking and that advice really was such a game changer. Time to refine that grumpy face. Using the pointed end of my wax carving tool, I draw his adorable frown. Another noodle to refine the shape of the mouth. And now for some smoothing magic. See? Magic. Aw, now he can breathe. For final smoothing, I wanted to try isopropyl alcohol and see what that was all about. This was something I saw come up in a lot of polymer clay videos as well as oil-based clays and it looked like it would be similar to how I smooth epoxy bodies with water. Then I baked them for 30 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Look at him, hating. After the bake, I made adjustments to my frog and I used Sculpey Bacon Bond glue to help make sure that the new layers of clay would adhere well and last. I used an embossing tool for finer application of the glue. My fingers and the wax carving tool help me detail his face as I add smaller noodles of polymer clay.
Oh no, what have I made? He's probably angry that he doesn't have any feet. If you were going to guess if I'm going to make the feet from noodles, you would be correct. These were a bit tricky, so I took my time, and once they were glued on, I made adjustments as needed. I did a lot of the wrist smoothing with the ball stylus and bossing tool, which left too much texture, so rubbing alcohol to the rescue. I really can't stress enough how normal it is to constantly make changes to art. Polymer clay is so great for that too, since it's so easy to add and subtract. Another sculpting technique I wanted to see if it would work in polymer clay is a slurry, which I made using sculpting thinning medium poured into a little bowl of clay. It kind of worked? I don't know, it was hard to get the consistency right. Either the clay was too thick or too runny. I'll try it again in the future and see them. Since the slurry didn't add a lot of texture, I decided to add little bumps one painstaking bump at a time. Slipping into a meditative state of mind helps make repetitive art tasks enjoyable. Music or podcasts help a lot. More rubbing alcohol helps soften the look. When I was a kid, I often burnt my clay sculptures, and I'm finding this foil and baking sheet setup has been great for keeping everything looking great and oven temperature gauge has been incredibly helpful too. See, no burn spots. He does have some areas that need filling in with more clay and some carving touch-ups with a hobby knife. The final bake was 45 minutes at 275 degrees again, and my supervisor was here to sign off on my work. For my first time working with polymer clay as an adult, and especially attempting something generally in the realism style, I have to say, I'm pretty happy with this little fellow. So much so that I have a feeling you'll see more polymer clay sculptures from me, and if you want to join me on that journey, please subscribe. Alright, I'll let you get back to your day, and thank you so much for watching. Bye!